That's almost menacing sounding. Hello, this is TJR. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. If not, welcome back. I Write the Songs is a song written by Bruce Johnston back in 1975. Bruce Johnston is perhaps best known for his time as a member of the Beach Boys. The best known version of this song was recorded by Barry Manilow, but in my research for this video, I discovered that it was first recorded by the 70s pop duo Captain and Tennille back in 1975, and then again by teen heartthrob David Cassidy that same year. But it was Barry Manilow's version that charted and reached number one on the Billboard Top 100 in 1976. Bruce Johnson would, of course, release his own recorded version of the song on his debut album entitled Going Public. More on that in a moment. Now, as for the uh, Captain and Tennille and David Cassidy versions, all I can say is that after listening to them, they really both show their age. Both recordings have what I would refer to as a level of 70s cheese production values that, in all honesty, is a bit cringeworthy when you listen to it now. I would describe the production used on the Barry Manilow version as a lot better than the previous two that I have just mentioned. This song was charting on the radio when I was 13 years old and was just beginning to listen to popular music. And I remember back then being impressed with it. But listening to it now, I have to admit that it does very much feel like a product of its time, but not in the way that the David Cassidy and Captain and Tennille versions do. Of course, what I'm being critical about right now is the studio production and not the song itself. Because when you strip away the song from all of that 70s studio production, it is, in my opinion, a quite remarkable song and a very beautiful song. By the way, I should add that, by comparison, Bruce Johnston's recorded version, released in 1977, features a much more sparse level of production and arrangement than any of the other recorded versions, and it feels a lot less dated for this reason. I Write the Songs is written in the key of F major. The opening melody is written entirely in what is referred to as major sixths. At least I think that's what it's called. Of course, if I'm wrong, I'm sure Rick Beato can correct me. Then we have this. That part, very, what's the word I'm looking for? Exaltive, if that's even a word. Ah, very triumphant and majestic. What's interesting is that the bass notes played underneath it here. Um, let me just play it for you here. That's almost menacing sounding. But then you add those chords, and you get this. And we land on an E-flat major. And after that very triumphant and very, you know, majestic opening, suddenly, ah, oh, just very relaxing. I've been alive. I wrote the very first song. What I love about that is it's basically portraying music, this art form that we all listen to and appreciate, as if it was an entity. It's describing it like it was an entity. 
I've been alive forever, and I wrote the very first song. I put the words and the melodies together. I am music, and I write the songs. I put the words and the melodies together. I am music. And I love how it, it has that little part. Bum, bum. You know, as if to announce it in a very regal way, but also it's announcing it like in a magical way. Um, I am music and I write the songs. And we've got that very regal march there. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. Songs of love and special things. I write the songs that make the young girls cry. I write the songs, I write the songs. And then we return back to that opening melody that's in major six. Going back to the lyrics of that last part here, I write the songs that make the whole world sing. Music is a universal language, and everybody, it makes everybody sing, no matter what it is. Even if that music is dark, even if that music deals with dark themes, it makes us sing. I write the songs of love and special things. I write the songs that make the young girls cry. I write the songs, I write the songs. This brings us to the second verse. My home lies deep within you, and I've got my own place in your soul. How we respond to music is based on our own personal experience, and that comes from deep within our souls. I don't know if any scientist has ever been able to really fully explain why the human psyche responds the way it does. And it's not just our psyche that responds, it's our bodies, it's our whole physical being that responds to music. It really is something that is unexplainable. I love how the fact uh, that the word, I've got my own place in your soul, lands on, the word soul lands on the F major seventh chord, which is a very soulful sounding chord and used in a lot of soul music. Then we go to the second verse here. Now when I look out through your eyes, I'm young again, even though I'm very old. And now notice how that line I'm young again, lands on the same chord uh, motif as I am music. Again, it's just very magical sounding. And I'm young again, even though I'm very old. And again, this song describes music like it's an entity. And so when that music, when we hear it, it enters into us. And then music experiences through our eyes. It's, it, it feels the music and sees it through our eyes. And then it becomes young again. I'm young again, even though I'm very old. In addition, I should also add that when we hear a song from our youth that we have not been exposed to in a very, very long time, it does have a certain time travel effect where suddenly we are transported emotionally back to that time when we first heard it. And for a moment, we do feel a lot younger. And then of course we go back to that chorus. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. I write the songs of love and special things. I write the songs that make the young girls cry. I write the songs, I write the songs. Now, after it comes out of that second verse, um, here we go. I write the songs, I write the songs. We have that little riff there, that little riff, very 70s, 
That's one part of the song that feels a bit dated, but we need to transition to the next part. And then the song changes its mood, its tone. It goes from being at times regal and soulful to now becoming kind of a bit of a, a musical number, uh, perhaps a bit musical theater. Oh, my music makes you dance and gives spirit to take a chance. And I wrote some rock and roll so you who can move. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the music becomes a little more visceral now. And so uh, the lyrics deal with that. Uh, my music makes you dance. It's that physical reaction. Gives your spirit to take a chance. And I wrote some rock and roll so you can move. We'll go to the next verse here. Music fills your heart. Yeah, that's a real fine place to start. It's for you. It's for me. It's for me. It's for you. It's a worldwide symphony. And again, it's speaking to that idea that music is this universal language. It's something that we all experience in one way or another. Maybe the music we listen to is different. Maybe some of us listen to opera. Maybe some of us listen to heavy metal. Maybe we listen to both. Maybe some of us listen to musical theater. Maybe some of us listen to Tejano. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know. I don't claim to like every style of music and genre of music in the world, and I'm sure neither do you, but everybody has music that moves them. I have a big sister who is primarily moved by medieval music. And that's great. That's what moves her. And that's what these lyrics are speaking to. And then it says it's a worldwide symphony. That's because we all experience it, you know. Um, and then, of course, it then goes back to the, uh, the chorus again. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. I write the songs of love and special things. I write songs that make the young girls cry. There's this interesting change here. And this is part of what I oftentimes talk about. The key to writing good songs is a proper amount of repetition and variation. We are singing the same lyrics again. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. I write the songs of love and special things. Of course, we're in a different key now at this point. We've moved into the key of A major. And then we have this little, this little kind of walk down. I write the songs that make the young girls cry. I write the songs, I write the... And then we have another change here. Songs. I am music and I write the songs. And that's a hard note right there. Not when I'm used to singing. And I write the songs. You can sing it falsetto too. Uh, like that. Now it's a little underlying melody under that line. And I write the songs. There we go. And just a beautiful way to end the song. When this song came out, of course, it was criticized for being kind of cheesy. And well, again, if you listen to the recording production, you can hear some of that, but it's still this incredibly beautiful song. And it still speaks to this universal experience that we all have when we listen to music. So there you have it. I Write the Songs by Bruce Johnston. I think this song is far more beautiful and powerful and even soulful than we give it credit for. And I think that um, it speaks to a universality between us all. Let me know your thoughts. I'm considering recording my own version of the song and putting it out there on YouTube. Let me know if you'd like to hear that. As always, if you like these videos, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell notification icon so you never miss a video. A big thank you to my patron supporters. Patron supporters do receive exclusive weekly videos not available on this channel. If you'd like to be a patron supporter, please go to patreon.com forward slash TJR the original. If you can't be a patron supporter, that's okay. You can leave a super thanks, a 
with any video that I've ever posted on this channel. And if you can't do that, just click like and that will help a great deal. Thanks so much for letting me hang out with you today and talk music. It means a lot. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.